Welcome to the HPI Savage Getting Started video. This video will show you more about the HPI Savage and its powerful HPI NitroStar engines. We'll show a Savage X 4.6 RTR in this video, but the steps are the same for all Savage big block engines. You will see how to prepare your Savage for the first run and how to tune it for optimum performance. We recommend that you have a look at the general getting started video for all HPI cars in this DVD first, because there will be a lot of tips and tricks for your Savage as well. It is also still essential to read the detailed instruction manual included in the box. First, check the air filter. Never run your car without the air filter. This is sure to damage the engine and void your warranty. Make sure that it sits properly in its mounting position and that the foam elements are in place and there are no gaps. Air filter maintenance is important and this is covered in detail later in this video. So let's fill up the tank. See the general getting started video for how to handle nitro fuel. Always follow the safety guidelines. To get the best performance, easy starting and long engine life, always use high quality nitro glow fuel designed for RC cars. We recommend a nitro content of between 16% and 25%. Higher nitro content will give you a little bit more power, but adds more cost. It's a good idea to stick to the same nitro content fuel and even the same brand of fuel. If you change nitro content or brand, you will almost always need to retune the engine. HPI recommends different fuel brands in different European countries. The fuel can we've used here is for illustration purposes only. Now fill up the tank completely for the static break-in. We are first going to break in the engine. This process is essential to get the best power, performance, and life from your engine. Also, not following this process correctly could void your warranty. For the first start of your engine, open the throttle manually by turning the throttle servo about one quarter of the way. Never open the throttle more than half the way. To start the break-in process, the carburetor needles have to be at the base settings. If you have changed the settings or have problems starting the engine, then return to the base settings shown later in this video. The next steps will show the Savage X 4.6 RTR with the HPI Roto Start system. We'll have a look at the Pull Start system later. You can also purchase the Roto Start system separately to upgrade other Savages with Pull Start engines. Starting your engine with the Roto Start system is very easy. To run the Roto Start, you will need a 7.2 volt battery pack with a standard plug. See the general getting started video for more information on batteries. Keep in mind to charge the battery before you first start. Assemble the Roto Start as shown. To prime the engine with fuel, cover the exhaust pipe with a thick cloth and without attaching the glow plug igniter, turn the engine with the rotor start until you see the fuel in the fuel tube reaching the carburetor. The engine is now ready to be started. Use a box or stand to elevate the vehicle so that the wheels can spin freely without contacting the ground. Attach the charged glow plug igniter and start the engine with the rotor start as shown. If the engine doesn't start within a few seconds, check the troubleshooting section we will show you right after this chapter. The process for starting an engine with a pull start is very similar. To prime the engine, you need to cover the exhaust with a thick cloth and pull the pull start until you see fuel is pumped from the fuel tank to the carburetor.
never pull the pull starter cord more than 30 centimeters, as this can damage the pull start. Attach the charged glow plug igniter and start the engine with quick short strokes as shown. When the engine is running, remove the glow plug igniter and manually adjust the throttle until the engine reaches a steady idle. The engine will not sound too clean during break-in, as it is tight and running quite rich in fuel. Due to the rich fuel setting, you should see oil spitting out of the exhaust pipe. Take your time during the break-in process. Let the engine run at idle until the tank is empty. Braking in the engine is very important to get the best power, performance, and lifetime from your engine. If the engine does not start easily, or you have changed the needle settings, you should return the needle valves to their base settings. The HPI NitroStar F 4.6 engine has a two-needle carburetor with a high-speed and a low-speed needle. The high-speed needle is at its base setting when the top of the needle is flush with the needle body. You can check this by looking and feeling the head of the high-speed needle with your finger. If the high-speed needle on your carburetor is not at this setting, then you should adjust it for the run-in period. In most cases, the high-end needle is the only one that needs adjustment. So if you have problems, always try resetting this high-end needle to the base setting first. The setting for the low-speed needle is similar to that of the high-speed needle. The head of the low-speed needle needs to be set so that it is flush with the carburetor body. Again, check the position of the low-speed needle by looking and feeling with your finger. If the engine fails to start, the most common problem is that either the glow plug is broken or the glow plug igniter is flat. The way to check for both is to remove the glow plug and test it in the igniter. The filament in the plug should glow red hot, so please be careful as the filament itself is hot enough to burn. If the glow plug does not become red hot, you need to charge the igniter or test it with a new plug. If the new plug glows, that indicates the igniter has sufficient power and the original plug is broken and therefore needs replacing. Always use HPI glow plugs to ensure the correct match with the engine. There are several grades of glow plugs, so be sure to use the correct one. After checking, replace the plug as shown, making sure the sealing washer is in the correct place. If too much fuel gets into the engine, it becomes flooded. In this case, the engine will lock up and the rotor start will not be able to turn over. If you try to use the rotor start on an engine that is locked, the safety relay on the rotor start may trip to protect the gears inside the rotor start unit. To make the rotor start work again, all you need to do is press in the relay button. If you are using a pull start and the engine becomes flooded, you will find it very hard to pull the pull start. If this happens, you should not continue to pull the pull start as this could cause damage to the pull start mechanism. To remove the excess fuel that has caused the engine to flood, you need to first remove the glow plug. Cover the engine with a thick cloth and turn the engine over with either the rotor start or pull starter. This will remove the excess fuel from the cylinder. Be careful to cover the engine head to avoid fuel splashing. We recommend testing the glow plug before refitting, as a flooded engine can damage the glow plug filament.
After checking, replace the plug as shown, making sure the sealing washer is in the correct place. Now it's time to run your model for the first time. But remember that the first three to four runs are still part of the break-in process. Details on batteries and radio setup are covered in the general getting started section on this DVD. Please follow advice given in this section before your first run. It is very important that you always turn on the transmitter before you turn on the car. Always remember, transmitter on first, off last. Fill up the fuel tank, prime and start the engine. Then increase the throttle very slowly until you reach full speed, then release. This will clean the excess oil out of the engine. If you want to stop the engine, hold a rag over the exhaust outlet for a few seconds. Now start the engine again. Place the Savage on the ground. It should not move when idling. If it does, adjust the trim on the transmitter so the car doesn't move. Also, center the steering using the trim setting on the transmitter. The car should run straight without touching the steering wheel. Drive the model slowly and carefully in a wide circle. Stay in the low to mid-range speeds. Never use full throttle during the first run. Use a bit of throttle, then coast and let the engine cool. Give a little more throttle and then coast again. Continue doing this until the tank is empty. Allow the engine to cool down after the first run. Refill the tank, prime the engine, and start the second run. Now you can accelerate slowly to full throttle for a short time. Only a second or two, no more at this stage. Then coast and accelerate again. Repeat this until the tank is empty. The engine needs a break-in period of three to four tanks to deliver full performance. Take it easy on the engine during break-in while it loosens up and gets faster. After the engine break-in, you can start tuning it to achieve optimum performance. Make sure that you have completed each step of the break-in process. Start with the needle valve base settings as shown earlier, or continue from the settings used to break in the engine. Fill the fuel tank and start the engine as normal. First, run up and down the road a few times to warm the engine up. We will adjust the high-speed needle first. Turn the high-speed needle valve one-eighth of a turn clockwise. The fuel mixture will become leaner. This means it contains less fuel and more air. You will notice that this improves performance and the top speed of the car. It should rev more and produce a little less smoke from the exhaust. Turn the needle valve another one-eighth of a turn clockwise.
performance will become even better. Always turn the needle valve one eighth of a turn at a time to maintain control over the adjustment. Repeat this process as long as there is an improvement in the engine's performance. If you have turned the needle valve too far, throttle response will not improve anymore and the engine might even stall when accelerating. At this point, do not lean the mixture anymore or you could damage the engine. In this case, turn the needle valve one eighth of a turn counterclockwise to add a little more fuel. This will richen the mixture a little to give optimum performance, correct lubrication, stable running, and a long life. When properly adjusted, the engine should run smoothly at top speed. The exhaust should always emit some blue smoke at full throttle. If there is no blue smoke, the engine is set too lean and could easily be damaged. On the contrary, if the engine is set too rich, there's no danger of damage, but the engine's performance will suffer. Now we are going to adjust the low speed needle in the same way. The low speed needle controls the fuel air mixture during acceleration. Turn the low speed needle one eighth of a turn clockwise. This will make the fuel mixture at low speed become leaner. You will notice that this improves throttle response and acceleration. Turn the needle valve another one eighth of a turn clockwise. Performance will become even better. As with the high-speed needle, the low-speed needle should be turned only one-eighth of a turn at a time to maintain control over the adjustment. Repeat this process as long as there is an improvement of the engine's performance. If you have turned the needle valve too far, the engine speed will start to rise at idle or the engine may shut off when accelerating. At this point, do not lean the mixture anymore or you could damage the engine. Turn the needle valve one eighth of a turn counterclockwise to add a little more fuel. This will richen the mixture a little and give optimum performance during acceleration. The ideal low speed needle setting will have a quick, smooth acceleration and visible exhaust blue smoke. If there is no blue smoke, the engine is set too lean and could easily be damaged. On the contrary, if the engine is set too rich, there is no danger of damage, but the engine's performance during acceleration will suffer. Remember to check the adjustment from time to time, as the air-to-fuel ratio can change with different ambient conditions. If you have problems, return to the base settings as shown earlier in the video and tune the engine again. We will now show you what correct and incorrect engine settings look and sound like. This should help you get the best from your engine, avoid problems, and maximize engine life. When both needles are adjusted properly, your Savage X 4.6 RTR will have a quick, smooth acceleration and run smoothly at top speed. The exhaust will always emit some blue smoke. If the high-speed needle is set too rich, the engine will feel sluggish and the top speed won't be very good. There will be a lot of smoke at full throttle.
If the high-speed needle is set too lean, there will be little smoke at full throttle. The engine will struggle to run, and it might even shut off at full throttle. This is the most dangerous situation for an engine, as there is not enough fuel to lubricate the engine, and it will overheat quickly. Never run the engine too lean. Adjust it right away, as it can damage the piston and sleeve. If the low-speed needle is set too rich, the engine will emit a heavy amount of smoke. It will seem slow and bog down because there is too much fuel, and then finally clear up before accelerating. If the low-speed needle is set too lean, the engine revs will start to rise at idle, and it will struggle while accelerating as it is starved of fuel. And here is how it should look again. Quick, smooth acceleration, an impressive top speed, and always some blue smoke. You can adjust the idle settings of the engine with the idle screw. To do this, start the car and apply the brakes with the transmitter. While applying full brake, turn the idle screw with a flat blade screwdriver. Turning the idle screw clockwise will make the revs go up. and turning it counterclockwise will make them go down. You can hear the revs changing while turning the screw. At idle, the engine should run stable at low, constant revs. Your Savage X 4.6 RTR is equipped with a two-speed gearbox, which allows your truck to achieve optimum acceleration and top speed. The two-speed gearbox is adjustable and can be tuned to the engine or terrain. We will first show you what you need to do if the gearbox shifts too early. Always stop your engine before adjusting the two-speed gearbox. Open the rubber cover. Then turn the spur gear as shown until you can see the alloy clutch holder through the hole in the plastic gear. Now turn the wheels while holding the spur gear as shown until you see the second lower set screw in the alloy clutch holder. You will need to use a two millimeter hex wrench to make adjustments to when the second gear engages. Turning the set screw clockwise will make the gearbox shift later. The adjustment is quite sensitive, so make your adjustments in 90 degree increments. If the gearbox shifts too late or not at all, you will have to adjust the gearbox for an earlier gear shift. Open the cover on the gearbox as shown before. Turn the set screw counterclockwise to make the gearbox shift earlier. Again, make your adjustments in 90 degree increments until you get optimal performance. The Savage can thrive in the toughest of conditions, but it needs your care to maintain its performance. Dust and dirt which get inside the engine can cause serious damage and even destroy the engine. Therefore, regular maintenance of the air filter is very important. Check the air filter after every run. First, unscrew the end cap of the filter assembly and remove the two elements of the air filter. Now rinse it with nitro motor cleaner, applying the cleaner to the clean side of the filter. Rinse until all dirt has been removed. 
always follow the manufacturer's guidelines for handling the motor cleaner. After the filter has dried, you have to apply air filter oil to the inner element of the air filter. We recommend that you use HPI air filter oil. Make sure that the inner air filter element is completely covered with oil. Now replace the filter elements. Make sure that they are properly fitted, leaving no gaps at the rim. If there are gaps, dirt could get into the engine and cause serious damage. Now your Savage is ready for action. As you can see, it's easy to refuel and restart the car without removing the body shell. Start carefully to get a feeling for the handling of the car and its amazing performance. You will soon see how your driving skills improve and you'll quickly be ready for some serious stunts. For now, enjoy your HPI model car and have fun.